All right, everybody, now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Starr Show with Ron Russell, the fabulously talented America's Got Talent season one winner who's all grown up now, Miss Bianca Ryan. Hello and welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Congratulations on all of your successes. I think, uh, can we ask you, like, how old are you now? I know you were 11 when you won America's Got Talent. Yeah, I am 22. Okay, so that was 11 years ago. Oh, my God. I know, time flies. That makes me feel really old. All right, so let's do some introductions, starting off with uh, the man behind the boards, Mr. Chad Murphy. Hey, Bianca, welcome back. Hey, thank you for having me. And then we have a chat room full of uh, people, so say hello to everybody in the chat room. Hey, everybody. Hope you're having a good uh, Wednesday. There you go. There's lots of people in the chat room, and you have a lot of – there's somebody, too, who I think is specifically in the chat room for you. Do you know Roy Brent? Oh, I do, yeah, yeah. Say hi hi to Roy. (laughs) Roy, how are you? There you go. All right, everybody. So this is Bianca Ryan. You can follow her on tw- Twitter. She's at Bianca Ryan. Are you Bianca Ryan on all your social media? Um, I am. I'm official Bianca Ryan on Facebook and Instagram, and then just at Bianca Ryan on Twitter. There you go. Which one do you like best out of all the social media platforms? All of out of all of them, definitely Instagram. Do you really? Is that be- just because? Of- is that where you have the most followers and the most people? It's just like more interactive. Like I just posted that I'm here, you know, like during the show on Instagram. It's just like very instant where like Facebook's more like a dedicated post where well, it's a story. You can just post whatever. Yeah. Facebook, Facebook too is more, um, it's not really for the younger generation. Like I'm part of the old generation, but it, I'm a Twitter person anyway. Like Twitter's my favorite all, and then Instagram and then Facebook. So I go through the markets that way. Yeah. Twitter's a little bit hard though. Cause you need like a play by play and like half the time I'm just, like you know like a hermit in my room doing like computer and music work and producing or like twitter you have to be like oh just ate a hershey bar oh <laughs> just got out of the shower i don't actually do that but i, I do uh, but i do hear what you're saying um actually we have uh, tristan say hi to tristan hi tristan how are you the first time he ever listened to the jimmy star show was one of the episodes that you were on and he's in australia oh wow oh my gosh what time is it there um Oh, it's like six in the morning, I think, or something. Five in the morning? I don't know. It's like a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. It's like it's really early. It's because it's the next day. It's not Wednesday there. It's Thursday. So because they're ahead of us. Have you ever toured it? Did you get to go? Have you been to Australia? I've actually never been to Australia. The two places that I never got to go that I want to tour is England and Australia. Okay, there you go. Well, England's fan. We have a great, great like a fan base in in the UK, and like I love England. Oh and I have, like, I have like 150,000 Twitter followers from England. Wow. I, I want to go there so badly. I think that's fun. So at 22, okay, so you're 22. You have a new single out. You've done all kinds of stuff. I don't really want to go over all the stuff that you did before because we'll, we'll spend more time talking about what you're doing now. Um, but one thing I didn't know, because I've always kind of like wondered like why music gets put out so sporadically from you. Um, yeah. And I didn't know that you had like a little health scare, actually a really big health scare. Um, why don't you tell everybody for the fans who like don't know about it so they'll be a little bit more up to date with like maybe why, first of all, the music doesn't come more frequently and, and just the scare that you had to go through. Sure. Um, I mean, to be totally honest, like I didn't want to tell anybody for a very long time, so I kept it secret for years and years. Uh, but I was going through like a lot of vocal issues. Um, I was overworked really, really young at a very young age and singing too often. And um, so my vocal cords were already very weak. And then I ended up getting a virus uh, that actually paralyzed uh, one of my vocal cords. Um, And that was really scary. But I was still able to sing. It was just a lot harder. Um, And then, you know, years were going by. And I wasn't singing like I used to. I was too afraid to, like, you know, really, really go for it. So I was putting out songs even throughout the time, like Alice, uh, which is, like, more of, like, a soft you know, just kind of a beautiful yes. song and lyrically driven because I didn't, I just really, I could not sing. Um, and I was so tired of like people kind of being like, well, why don't you put out any music? You know, like you're not singing like you used to. And it got to a point where I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to come clean because I shouldn't have to take the full blame for what's happening. Absolutely. So, so, you know, well, plus like, people are a lot more understanding if they, if you keep them in the loop, like, 
like they're your friends, you know, like that they know what's going on. They're way more supportive and they understand what's going on and they'll, they'll support everything that you've got going on. Oh yeah, I agree. And, and so, you know, I thought that I owed it to my fans and everybody who had been following me for years and years to tell them what was really going on. So, you know, 2015 and 16, I was actually going through, I went through two vocal cord surgeries and, um, a stomach surgery because I was having really bad GERD, so acid reflux, which was burning my esophagus, which is just really, really bad luck as well because I'm a singer. So I had to get uh, a stomach surgery, a fund application on my stomach to stop the acid from coming up, or else I was at risk for esophagus cancer, which would not be good for a singer. And I got that done actually just this January, and then back in October, I had to get blood vessels along with my paralyzed vocal cord fixed. Um, and I had to get the blood vessels lasered off of my vocal cords. And there's a very high chance that when you get that done, that you're not going to be able to sing uh, nearly as good, and you're going to lose a lot of range. And, and it didn't work for you, though. It went opposite for you. It went opposite. I literally, I had the surgery, the, the laser surgery back in October uh, to get all the blood vessels off my vocal cords. And I ended up getting... I almost have on almost an octave, like more from the low end to the high end. So I got like four extra notes on the bottom and like five extra notes on the top, which is unheard of. My doctor was like, honestly, this is a miracle. Be happy, go sing and do your thing and don't hold back now. There you go. First of all, I want to apologize to everybody if you hear my dogs barking because somebody rang the doorbell, I think, upstairs. And they went running from the basement upstairs and I can't, I can't get them to be quiet since we're like actually on the air. <laughs> Radio. <laughs> so I apologize if you hear the doc, and that's Shazam and Brandy making noise. Um, so you've been through a lot. I actually have a really good friend. Her name was Joya Bruno. It is Joya Bruno, not was Joya Bruno. She's one of the three girls of Expose, which in the 90s were like the biggest selling girl group of all time. And they have, I think, eight top ten hits or something. And uh, they were really great. Actually, they had the Free Willy ballad on the Free Willy uh, because Free Willy would have been about your age group, I think, demographic maybe. Um, but anyway, they're really good. And she had that same problem, and they told her she wasn't going to be able to sing. And, and um, she was out of commission for a little while, but she came back you know, relatively quickly considering that they told her she wasn't going to be able to sing. And, and now she's like doing all kinds of stuff. I think she's getting ready to star in something on Broadway. Um, but I think it's a really cool thing, and I think that – um, first of all, you know, way to go. I'm so happy that it didn't, it wasn't something that sidelined you because you're, you know, even though you've been in the spotlight for a very long time, you know, you're still incredibly young and have a huge career ahead of you. And so it would have been terrible if, if you would have been sidelined. So I think, you know, kudos to that and way to go with that. And the fact that you actually have more range now than you had then is awesome. Yeah, it's, it's insane. I'm just, I'm just like incredibly thankful and I'm glad that I was able to finally get the courage to be like, let's just get the surgeries out of the way. I'm not blaming myself anymore. I can't blame myself forever. You know, like I was, you know, so young when all of this happened and I was overworked and my vocal cords were definitely weak when I, when I got the virus that paralyzed him and I had to stop blaming myself, you know? So I was just like, I'm going to come clean. I'm going to tell my fans what's up and I'm pretty sure, you know, they're going to be understanding of it. And oh, just, absolutely. The feedback I've gotten from everybody has just been uh, incredibly overwhelming, and I'm just so thankful for all my fans. There you go. And I also saw, because uh, last time we had you on, I think, was for the release of Alice, which that was in 2015, I think, right? Yes. So the last time we had you on was for Alice, and now you have a new single called One Day. And from what I understand, which we'll talk about more, I guess, but you have another single coming out Friday. Is that right? I saw it someplace on 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 Twitter or someplace. Yeah, I have. So One Day came out um, a few weeks ago, and that's been doing really well. Uh, actually, Megan Trainer tweeted about it. She was raving about the song, so she loves it. And I saw that, and I was like, what? was freaking out and um a lot of people thought that she had co-wrote the song like Perez Hilton had tweeted that he thought Megan uh, co-wrote the song because it does kind of sound like her style I was like no but I wish hopefully one day you know no pun intended oh I think I saw that I think I actually saw that tweet I think I saw that okay yeah. so that's fun so who who did you who who wrote the song so I wrote the song okay produced by uh Scott Stallone who also co-wrote the song with me we work together as a collaboration on the song. He's actually here in Philly. So it was a lot of fun just kind of like diving into, because I've never really, really written a bunch of songs that I put out. You know, I wrote Alice. Alice was the first song I ever released where I put it out. And it was also self-released. 
Um, and this song is also self-released. I don't have a label or anything right now. I'm doing everything on my own, which is incredibly hard, but it's extremely rewarding. Um, so yeah, one day's out, and then what I got to do is coming out this Friday. So that one has more of like an '80s throwback sound, and um, it's well, gonna be fun. So one day, though, I mean, is very, very different for the stuff that I have heard from you. In a lot of ways, uh, I wasn't surprised at all when I heard it because I was like, okay, you know, the first time you heard her sing, she was 11 and she's grown up and her voice is maturing and she's maturing. And so her music is, is not going to be the same as it was, you know, when she was 11 and 13 and all those stuff that you put out, you know, when you were younger. And I was super impressed. I was like, oh, my God, this is like she's really grown up to have a fabulous like identity of herself and who she is and what her music is going to be like and i think i think you're going to have a ton of success with it because i think it's really really good i'm really hoping i have like this is just like you know one day's the first single and then i have what i gotta do which is the second single and it's a five song ep and like one day and what i gotta do you know i wrote those over a year ago and so it's it's gonna be interesting for everybody to see each song kind of like grow with me as an artist uh, because each song matures. I thought One Day was a good choice because it kind of had that young poppy sound. So it was good for the people who were fans of me when I was younger. And then they kind of understand it. They're like, oh, it's a little mature, but it still sounds like her, you know? Oh, yes. And then each song is going to kind of like mature with me up to, you know, me being I'm a 22-year-old now. And you're going to see the writing become more mature and have more mature concepts, uh, deeper relationships. Uh, and a deeper sound. It's going to go a little bit more darker, a little bit more EDM, a little more radio worthy. I guess I love it. Like, Cara, like the Halsey type sounding stuff. So that'll be uh, the EP comes out in July, but you'll see each song just totally grow with me. It's it's going to be exciting. I love it. So first of all, I want to give some props to Scott Stallone because I have to say I didn't know who he was, but I'm like nosy and I like to know who everybody is. And I saw he started following me on Twitter. Hey, Scott, thanks for following. And I'm following him back. Yeah. And so I went. Uh, so to give him some props, first of all, to, to show you the kinds of people that that Bianca's actually like working with, because this is like not like some little dude doing stuff in his garage. This dude is like super, super talented. He's got a great resume. Um, he's got a website. I think it's uh, scottstallone.com, so you guys can look it up. Um, but basically, like he's produced songs for besides Bianca, he's done stuff for All Time Low, David Archuleta. He has songs that he's pr produced um, where the songs have been picked up to be in different movies like Deadpool, Gone Girl, Logan, Pitch Perfect 2, House of Cards. Um, so he's he's got a phenomenal resume, and the fact that you know you guys are working together, I think, is kudos to both of you because he's very well accomplished and you're very well accomplished from listening to the first song. I think you guys are a really great fit, you know, to be together working together on stuff, and um, so I think it's you know kudos to you, kudos to him, and I just wanted to give him some props since he followed me on Twitter and he he seems like a really talented guy. Oh yeah, he is super talented. He's got a great resume and. For me to be able to find somebody that talented, that literally his studio is 20 minutes away from where I live here in Philly, I'm like incredibly thankful. And it's been amazing because I, I you know, over the last few years, I couldn't always travel to L.A. and do New York because I wasn't performing live because of the voice stuff. So it was really great. And, you know, he really believed in me even through all those hard times when we recorded those songs and went back in and edited it even after, you know, my voice was better. So he's been incredibly supportive of this whole process. And. He is the producer on every single one of the songs on this new EP. Um, so you'll see even him grow as a producer with me as well and us as a team, writing-wise. Um, I love it. Good. So here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do with it. Chad. Yes, sir. You have the song, right? Absolutely. All right, so we actually, I pulled the lyric video off of YouTube, so there'll be stuff for people who are watching to actually be able to see. So uh, we're going to play the lyric video for one day. How about you introduce it for us, and then as we're playing it, as soon as we get done, we'll talk some more about it so everybody can hear it. Sure. All right, hey, guys, it's me, Bianca Ryan, and you're about to watch my lyric video for my first single, One Day. Here we go. It's a little bit Monday, and the whole lot of one day. Ooh, had a dream and a shot glass. Ooh. I guess it went down too fast mm. It's a little bit of my voice And a whole lot of my choice I speak the vision of crazy ambition Can't hate me for wishing still That one day I could have a yacht Forget about the things I forgot That one day I could see beyond the borders of this tired old town And one day I could have a penthouse fee with Egyptian guys It's like one day
forgot that one day I could see beyond the borders of this tired old town in one day. go well done bianca ryan Woo-hoo! there you go everybody so that's one day by bianca ryan you guys it's available on all the digital download sites now and hope you guys love it everybody in the chat room said that they love it awesome Yay. thank you guys so much i'm so glad you enjoyed it tristan said don't let them hold you down everybody else just says awesome and love your voice yeah. which by the way your, your voice has matured like really fabulously like you know because not everybody even with all the problems that you've had not everybody you know, gets better as they get older. Sometimes they peak very young, and the fact that you're really just starting to peak now uh, is pretty phenomenal. Oh, thank you so much. I know I I really did. Like I tried to hone in. Like it's so it's so hard being like held back. Like knowing like oh I know I can sing this, but my my muscles literally just won't allow me to. So what I did was I really did a lot of ear training, and I I listened to a lot of jazz. I listened to a lot of pop, and I started you know mimicking a lot of singers throughout the years to try to like really develop my tones. So um, I'm glad that people can see, you know, the maturity in my voice. Absolutely. So you have a thing. What I got, what I got, what is it called? What I, what I got, what I got to do. Okay. So what I got to do is coming out in two days. Yes. And um, so that's the second song off the EP. And then the EP is coming out in July. Yes. Yes. I got, the EP yeah. coming in July. Um, so I'm still finishing, to be honest, me and Scott are finishing the last two songs on the EP right now. So we're, we're in a rush. There you go, Scott. Hightail it. Get to it. <laughs> yeah, we're in a rush. <laughs> no, that's fine because like you've got time and if it gets pushed back a little bit, as long as you have it come out before November, you're okay. Yeah. Cause nobody, you just don't want stuff coming out in November cause November, well, I mean, you're, you're pretty established already just because everybody knows who you are. So you could, but in, in the indie world, they always say, you know, never release anything in November and December cause that's for established artists only. Yeah. I heard that too, but I know I'm, I told you, I'm actually having a second EP come out this year to kind of make up for lost time, uh, secretly. Um, so that's going to yeah. come out. Part two is going to come out, um, believe it or not in September. So, you just, so you've got yeah. a lot of work to do. You have a lot of writing, a lot of recording, a lot of Scott producing, lots of stuff to do with it. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of work to get done. So, who are some of the people? First of all, do you like keep in touch? Like, did you did you keep it? Do you keep in touch with anybody that you met when you were on America's Got Talent? Um, I know I had a conversation not too long ago with LD Miller. He was uh-huh. like the harmonica player. Yep. So I talk to him sometimes on Facebook. I know I've chatted with him before. And um, not not really any anybody else, really. Do you ever, like, when you have a new song, do you, like, tweet it out, the link or whatever, to, like, any of your judges that were judges when you were on it? Hmm, I think – I know David Hasselhoff had uh, – his management team had contacted me and told me that they really liked What I Gotta Do. Because my initial idea for the What I Gotta Do music video, which we don't have one now, but we turned it into a lyric video – but I wanted him in it, and it was supposed to be a really funny concept with him. Uh, but he was—he's uh, actually in Germany for a while, so he couldn't do the filming of it. But I know he really loved that song. Uh, okay, I haven't heard that one yet. So, I, so is the lyric video for that actually up? The lyric video for what I gotta do is coming out on Friday, but it's okay. tomorrow with JustJared.com. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. Just Jared, he's awesome. Yeah, I have like an incredible PR. Uh, company right now working with me on everything so yay Uh-oh, we froze okay you froze you froze so we missed them so we'll give a shout out to your PR company and just Jared that's super cool I gotta love it somebody actually hey uh, B Claudia from Germany just uh, joined the chat room so hey hey so they want to know in the chat room um, are you dating anyone <laughs> yeah I actually do have a boyfriend um, but I like to keep it more like private 
Okay, you don't have to tell us who he is, but you can tell us is he like is he an entertainment or is he like I shouldn't say regular person that makes it entertaining when people sound better. <laughs> is he just like a is he like a lawyer, doctor, is he in a regular profession or is he in the very difficult profession of entertainment? <laughs> I would definitely say he's in the difficult profession of entertainment. He's a, a musician. Okay. Oh yeah, so that's always a difficult one. Okay. Way to go. So congratulations. So how long have we been dating? Um over a year. About oh. a year and a half, yeah. Good for you. All right, everybody. So she's not single anymore, but she's still beautiful, and you don't have to, like, uh, worry about that she's not having a good time when she's not, like, recording music. She's got someone to share things with, so there's good. And how's your little sister? Oh, my baby sister? Yeah, because she used to run behind you. Oh, my gosh. She's doing good. <laughs> she's a hassle. She's literally always around. But I don't know if you guys follow my Instagram story, but I post about, like, my everyday life. So, you know, my boyfriend's on there, and Eva's on there, my baby sister, all the time. She's rocking her Bianca Ryan T-shirt and singing so away. You, so if you guys want to actually, like, find out what her boyfriend looks like, you have to follow her on Instagram. <laughs> it's Instagram uh, official Bianca Ryan, right? Yeah. So you got to follow her on Instagram and then you can actually see who what what he actually like looks like and what everything's going on. So like where do people buy a Bianca Ryan t-shirt? Uh, you can actually get one on my website right now. It's biancaryan.com. I think they're on sale for like $12, which is pretty good. You know and I found you... myself with an autograph picture, so You know what you need to do because like I I didn't know that you had a website. I, I'm just double checking this to make sure I'm not going to say something that I'm going to be like, "Oh, I'm just an idiot and I didn't check correctly." But <laughs> what you got to do yeah, see, you don't have you don't have um your website on your Twitter profile. You have your oh. Twitter profile on your on your Twitter profile as your website where your website should be. So you need to go in and edit that and change that and put biancaryan.com. Because oh, I because because I went on there and looked at it and I was like, oh, I guess she doesn't have a website then. So if oh, you want to book her, you can book her. But otherwise, you click that link and it just takes you to your Twitter. <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. I do. <laughs> so yeah. everybody. So you can go to BiancaRyan.com, you guys, and that way you can find out what she's got. Do you sell music and stuff on there? I didn't go to it because I didn't know you had one. It's what's on your website besides all about how fabulous you are? Well, I'm on it. I just changed the link. So okay, it's good. on my Twitter now. Um, <laughs> basically, the home page is for one day. Um, I'm not good. I'm not very good with social media. I try my best, though. But um, there's the merch store. There's a blog. I do almost a weekly blog. I have all my events and my performances that are coming up. I think I'm, uh, I have, I don't know if I have it up on my website, but I'm performing at the Wawa Welcome America 4th of July event on July 4th here in Philly, which is super exciting. There you go. Congratulations. Also, you guys, if you go and sign up to be on her email list, she sends out really nice emails about special things that she's trying to put together, which I don't know if we're allowed to tell the whole world, so I'm just going to say go to her website and and sign up to be on her mailing list, and then you'll get emails of some really cool stuff that she's doing you know, with and for her fans. Yes, How's that? a very special one went out today with the release date and a pixelated a kind of sneak peek of the image artwork. Uh, so, yes, please sign up because you'll get all the exclusives that I don't always post on all socials. That's right. That's good. I get it because I'm on it, you guys. So, like, you guys got to just get on it, too. So, so, so if you could perform now, because well, first of all, who are some of the people now that you listen to, like modern day people of music that either influence you or they don't have to necessarily influence you, but you just like, like them? You know, mm. you like their music. There's so many. I know John Mayer's new album was incredible. Um, and well, I you're love kinda, like, you're kind of young too for John Mayer. <laughs> yes, yeah. I I mean I love that he's so funky. Uh, I would say him. I love Megan Trainer. I love Zara Larson. I think her music's incredibly powerful. Yes. Um, uh, Troy Sivan. I know he really really influenced me last year in a lot of my writing. I'm following him on Twitter, but he didn't follow me back. Most everybody follows me back, but he didn't follow me. But I love him, too. Uh, I, he's on my Spotify playlist. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tro Troy's music is insane. I think he worked on that music with, like, Jack Antonoff, who's, like, an incredible writer and producer as well. And he's, he's from Jersey, so, I mean, let's work, Jack. Um, so, uh... Well, if you could, like, perform, if you could do a duet with anybody, it could be male or female, but if you could do a duet right now that was going to get released by the public, like, who would be the person that you would want to do a duet with? Um, to be honest, I would probably go with Megan Trainer because she's been really, really supportive of everything that I've done, like, even from before when I was on Vine. Like, she was always revining and loved all my covers I did of her. 
And then now with One Day releasing, and she literally raved about the song on Twitter. So definitely her. I, I think we we match a lot, and I think our songwriting capabilities kind of like intertwine a little bit too. So I think it would be a really, really good duet. Okay, I, I, I'm okay with that one. So I, I can't stand the fact that they got rid of Vine. Oh my gosh, I know. I literally wanted to cry. I worked so hard. I had two. Life. I had two million like Vine revines or whatever. I had like two million of them. And I was like, and I worked so hard to get those, putting out those little like, you know, I would put out like two little videos a day because I was like, I want to be like all these other people who have like millions and millions of vines. As soon as I got to two million vines, which took me a little while, then they they stopped. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was friends with all those big Viners, like, you know, Anna Clendenning and Jesse Smiles and Marcus Johns, like, and 85th, like, I, and King Batch, like, all of them, like, you know, we were, I had met all of them and, and, and was good friends with a lot of them. So it was, like, really, really sad. Like, you know, a lot of them moved back home and, and stopped pursuing what they were doing because that was their outlet. And it just... And the really big Vine people, because like I had, we had, I forgot who we had, but we had somebody on the show who was a big Vine person. I don't remember who it was who got like all kinds of acting gigs and stuff because he was so popular on Vine, mm -hmm. um, and um, he was in like all these different TV shows and stuff, you know. And so by eliminating that, which I guess they weren't making any money, but by eliminating that, you know, those people don't have a way to get recognized the same way they did on Vine, you know, because on YouTube, yeah. there's YouTube stars, there's you know, Vine stars, there's like all the different platforms have their like celebrities. But in a way, I, I thought it was unfortunate. And I thought it was just unfortunate for me, too, just because I was like starting to get good at it. And then they took it away. Yeah, no, I went I went like ham on Vine for a while. I was getting like millions and millions of loops. And then they added the star button where you had to star like two years after the app came out. You had to star your favorites in order to get them to show up on your newsfeed. And I think that's just when it went downhill because nobody's going to remember to go back to the thousand pages they were following. I know. I can't remember. Even like when I try to do my follow Fridays on Twitter, like I can't even remember all the people I'm supposed to do it. But luckily, I have Iris, who's Hope2259 in the chat room, and everybody who's ever been a guest on, she puts him in a follow Friday, and so I can copy and paste her. She's fabulous. So, oh, so well, she's fabulous. So thanks so much for that too, Iris. I love it. They're asking where are you from, but you're from Pennsylvania. You're from Philadelphia, right? Yeah, I'm from Philadelphia. And also they're asking, she reminds you of, in, uh, says, she reminds me of Texas in a good way. Do we know where she's from? But that's Philadelphia. And then Roy Brent wrote, and I don't know if this is for you or for somebody else because it's going so fast I can't keep track. It says, I'd still like a full-length blues duet with Jonathan Boogie Long We are King, from oh, We Are Kings. I uh, did. I did an independent film called We Are Kings, and uh, I did, I wrote a few songs for it. So that's what he's referring to. Oh, okay. Okay, everybody. See, like, so he's like a mega fan because, like, I didn't know that. I wasn't privy to that. <laughs> so yeah, you, three years ago. Did, so you acted in it also? Yeah, I was uh, the lead role with Jonathan Boogie Long, who's an amazing blues guitar player who's really famous in Baton Rouge. Um, and we did, uh, we wrote a few songs together for it, and I acted in it. It was my first time really acting as, like, a lead character. I'd done a film called 12 and Holding before, which was on Netflix, but I only had a very small role. Um, so it was, it was kind of scary. I'm not, I'm not the best actress, if I'm, like, going to be totally honest. I get a little bit embarrassed, but I'm starting to overcome that over the last few years. So is that something that you might pursue in addition to your singing? Uh, yeah. Definitely. I definitely want to pursue that more. It all is all going to start, I guess, with the with the release of my music videos. I'm working on official music videos for these songs. I just finished one for my third single titled Man Down. That's going to come out a little bit later. But it's going to be like you're going to see me act in it a lot. There's a lot of fighting with the relationship and being flirty, etc. So you're going to see me build, I guess, as an actress as well. I love it. I'm not really very good at it either. I've been in a ton of movies, but they really only book me because they know I'm really good at promoting and public relations, and they know they can come on the show and on, they'll get millions of plays and stuff. So, so that's really the only reason that they put me in. But I've been in a lot, and I think it's a lot of fun. I just suck at it. Yeah, no, I want to feel like more worthy of it. I totally know where you're coming from. Like I used to get for like Chuck E. Cheese commercials and like all this stuff, and I'm like, I don't, I'm not even good. And then I'm like, you guys just want me because I can sing, but you know. <laughs> It feels good to like be chosen because you're actually good and qualified. Yeah, I don't know what that's like yet. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like one of these days we'll be able to like be able to say that. But in the meantime, you got to have fun with it. So what are you gonna do? Oh, it yeah. says I'm. He says he's the caretaker of Bianca's wiki page, so he probably knows more about her than he should. 
<laughs> Way to go, Roy. You got to like love it. You can make me a wiki page, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wait, wait, if you're in charge of my wiki page, we need to change that photo. I look really bad in that wiki photo. <laughs> okay, okay. There you go, Mr. Roy Brench. Actually, you should use the photo that we used for this because it's so cute with the bubbles and oh, everything. Oh, yeah, I it's, do. I love that one. Um, it's super nice. And the fact that you've uh, – one thing I think is really cool that you're still like a normal person. You know, you've gone through extreme highs and extreme lows and – you know, being thrown into the spotlight at such an early age, a lot of kids get really like screwed up. And the fact that, you know, it's been 11 years, you're still doing what you love doing, you're having success, you know, we're hoping that you're going to have more and more success as you continue going with it all, but that you're not like all, you know, we're not reading about you, like, where are they now? Or, you know, TMZ is not like tracking you, you know, getting out of a car without any like underwear at some like party when you were 18 <laughs> or anything, you know, really terrible and, and, and career ruining, you know, like that. So I think the fact that you kept a good head on your shoulders, it probably helps that you're still, you know, that you're still in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, you know, um, you know, working on all the things that you want to do, but you didn't let the fact that, you know, you were a, a household name at age 11 screw everything up. So kudos to you on that. Yeah, no, I honestly, you just, you have to stay grounded. I mean, if you're going to really put out authentic music and be an authentic songwriter, you need to live normally and you need to live how other people are living. And if you want to relate to people your own age, you need to kind of just stay normal and stay grounded. Absolutely. I think it's like fun. So, okay. So it's a summer. What are the, what, what are the favorite movies you're looking to go see? Oh my gosh. You're going to like think I'm crazy, but like, I really don't watch movies. Um, oh, really? Okay. The last movie I went to see in theaters was Beauty and the Beast. And that was the first movie I had seen in like months. That's a good one though. It was, it was, it was done very well and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Go see Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's really fun. Yeah. We saw Wonder Woman this past weekend, and we really enjoyed it. Oh, okay. I'm going to put that on my to-do list. So Wonder Woman was really good, and I don't know. The Mummy opens this weekend. I think that might be fun, too. I like scary movies, so. Oh, I like scary movies, too. So I'm like a horror movie buff, so anything that's kind of like a scary movie is probably what I like the best. Yeah. No, I love scary movies. So do you have a favorite scary movie that you've seen ever in your lifetime? It doesn't have to be recent. Um, I'm going to say... I'm not going to lie. I'm still, you're going to think that this is like really old school, but The Ring, literally, yeah, good... that movie still has me like messed up, like big time. Oh, look who we have. My baby sister just came in. Hi, baby sister. What's your baby sister's name? Eva. Eva. Hi, Eva. That's the one that was always <laughs> running around. Yes, I know. And I even saw like, uh, I don't know what you did. You did something else where like you were even doing a video or something and you were like, oh, you know, my baby sister's photo bombing us or, or yeah. video video bombing us. Come say hi real quick. Come say hi, Eva. She's wearing hi. her shirt. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, and you have your Bianca Ryan t-shirt. So Eva, how old are you? Four. Oh, wow. You're four years old. You're getting old already. Yeah. <laughs> You are. <laughs> you have a really big family, right? I do. There's five of us all together, five siblings. So I have my older brother, then there's me. I have my younger sister, Bella, who's 17, then my younger brother, Jagger, who's 14, and then my baby sister, who's four. So my parents are pretty freaking crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Eva. So what about are, are any of your other siblings? Do they like to sing? Oh, push your, push your camera back up again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Eva likes to sing. I know Jagger used to sing a little bit, but that's about all. Okay. Okay. So are they in, so seven, one of them 17. That's the 17 year old Jagger? Uh, oh, that's, no, that's Bella. Oh, Bella. Oh, oh my gosh. They're all named after like Twilight. Okay. Yeah. Jag Jagger. Is Jagger named after Mick Jagger? Yeah, he is. And I'm actually named Bianca after Bianca Jagger. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Yeah. Ooh. I love that. Do you actually my, like? Do you like the Rolling Stones? Do you? Your, your parents probably like the Rolling Stones. Yeah, my my dad. Um, my dad's a huge Rolling Stones fan. That's that's funny. I I think the Rolling Stones are like one of the greatest bands like of all time. And so even, you know, you're younger, so like you like they're not like probably relative for you. Even though since you live in a household with people who love them, they might be relative for you. But I think a lot of people your age don't even really know who they are because. Yeah. No. Not many. <laughs> <laughs> they are like one of the best like bands like freaking ever. So I I love that though that that that, that people in it. Did you like to, Did you see the Twilight movies? Because someone's named Bella. Oh my gosh, I was obsessed with Twilight. I actually read all of the books. That was like the first time I ever started really reading in my life. 
Me too. I read the Twilight books, and I'm old. I read the Twilight books and the Harry Potter books are the only two series they, I've ever read. They were really, really good. So are you Team Edward or Team Jacob? Oh, my gosh. I kept going back and forth. Like, at first, I was, of course, you're going to be Team Edward at first, but then you're, like, Team Jacob. And then at the time, you know, Taylor Lautner had more of, like, that appeal for, like, my age group. So then I turned into Team Jacob. I think I would probably be Team Jacob, too, actually. Like, I've been watching, like, anything that they do since Twilight. Unfortunately, they're not getting, like, the roles that they should be getting um, yeah. or that I thought they'd be getting. But I, I think I was Team Jacob, too, so I think I fucking I, – oh, excuse me. I just said a bad word. I think I did, dug it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of using using any bad language. I almost made it. Oh, well. I made it all the way into the last minute. Okay, so everybody, this is Bianca Ryan, you guys, and that's her little sister in the background, Eva. And she's got a brand new single called One Day. It's available now everywhere on all the digital download sites. Um, Friday, she's got another single called What I Gotta Do. It's going to be released, and you can probably get it on all the digital download sites. And if you go to JustJared.com tomorrow, the video is getting released for it. And you can follow her on Twitter at Bianca Ryan. You can check out her website, BiancaRyan.com. You can follow her on Instagram and Snapchat. Is it Snapchat or Facebook that's official Bianca Ryan? Um, Facebook is official Bianca Ryan. And are you on Snapchat? I am on Snapchat, but I don't I don't snap as much ever since the Instagram story. But my, yeah, I Snapchat here and there. It's Binky Girl two two two. I can't even figure out Snapchat. I guess I'm just too old to be able to figure it out because I have yeah. I have not been able to figure that part out. But okay, so follow her on Instagram, you guys. Official Bianca Ryan. She's not on Facebook that much, but you'll see the post. But definitely follow her on Instagram. Do you make your Instagram post to Facebook and Twitter at the same time? Um, I don't do it. Yeah, I share it usually. Yeah, that's the best way because then you cover all the different platforms. So yeah. everybody. So everybody, please go out, get the new single. She's an indie artist. She needs everybody's support. She's fabulous. She's gorgeous. <laughs> and we want to thank you for coming on the Jimmy Star Show and wish you all the luck with the new singles and the new EP that comes out. And uh, anytime you need anything retweeted, just let me know and I'll retweet it for you. Oh, thank you so much. And seriously, thank you so much for having me. And honestly, to all the fans out there and to all of you, like I really, really appreciate all of your support. You know, just streaming the song, you know, just streaming the song for free even means so much to me because I just, it would mean so much to me to get these songs charting, especially because I'm doing this all on my own. There you um, go. So thank you. Thank you so much. And stay tuned for the new song on Friday. And you're going to right. with just Jared. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Bianca. Bye. All right. Thanks. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope uh, everybody enjoyed the, the interview today. Chat room, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you guys later, and have a great weekend. Chad, thank you. Great job, Jimbo. Talk to you next week. All right, bye-bye. What are we going to be wearing? Yo, I'm a Liverpool MC. You can't test me. Big up the girls inside the party. Big up the girls inside the party. Let's get down to crazy Jimmy. Big up myself. I'm not going to tell me. Big up the one and only the Turkish MC. Always have the clothes of Jimmy.